keep, let's continue on here uh, with 9 and 10 are together. Oops, let's just go to here and let me clear this off. And so we've got an equilibrium problem here. It says that we've got an object. Uh, it says that it is in static equilibrium. And static just means that it's stationary. It, it's not moving and it continues to not move. Um, and so there's a couple of questions here uh, about, here's the object and it says that it's four meters long. It's uh, two of the forces are shown here. There's a 10 Newton force here and a 17.3 Newton force. Uh, it says that there is three forces acting on the object. Uh, and so one of them, we just don't know anything about that force right now. Now, um, okay, let's, so we need to figure out everything we can about the third force. So we want to find the magnitude of the third force and we want to find the distance from point P where that third force needs to be applied. So the, uh, the tools that we get to work with in this problem in any equilibrium problem is that the, the net force has to be zero and the net torque has to be zero. And so what that looks like, and I'll just, I'll write these up here. The way we apply it is with these components. So uh, the net for the horizontal net force must be equal to zero. Let's draw an axis here. Um, and also the vertical forces have to add up to zero. And finally, I guess I'm gonna have to make some room here the net torque has to be zero. Really this is the net torque about an axis that goes in and out of the board, the z-axis, uh, but that's the only uh, axis that we that we use for our torques. Um, so yeah, I'm not labeling z there. <clears throat> Alright, let's start off here. Uh, so we're gonna go through, we have to consider all three of our forces and find their horizontal components here. Now this force ha has zero x component, so that one is pretty easy. This one is also relatively easy because it's pointing directly in the positive x direction. And finally, we have to consider that the third force, our mystery force, uh, may well have a x component. So I'm just going to write in here plus the x component of the third force. And they all have to add up to zero. <clears throat> and so right away, actually, we can see that the, the third force has an x component of negative 17.3 uh, newtons. So we're not in the answer yet, but that's going to be helpful for us. Because we're going to now move on to our next tool here, which is the uh, net force in the y direction is zero. And so this one, again, is going to be relatively easy for us. This has zero y component. And then we need to consider that the third force may have a y component. And it does, because when we solve for it, we get positive 10, 10 newtons. And so actually, let's, let's take a look. We've, we've got a lot of information here. Uh, we actually know what, uh, what our force arrow, our third force arrow looks like. It points upwards uh, and to the, to the left. And so we can draw this in. Force three is going to look something like this because it has a Here are the x and y components of force three. And at this point, in order to find the magnitude of the third force, uh, we, we want to use that uh, Pythagorean theorem um, to find this, the, the length of this hypotenuse here. And so we, we've seen that before. Um, All right, and when, when we plug that in, uh, you'll just get 20. So answer D, 20. <clears throat> and so we're ready now to move on. We didn't have to use our torque equation yet, but we're, we'll, we, we will need it in a, in a moment here to answer the, the next question. Um, find the distance from point P 
that the third force is applied. We know what the third force arrow looks like now. Here it is. So we need to take that arrow and apply it to this object somewhere. And we want to make the net torque zero. Uh, and actually, let me, I'm going to clear off some of this work here. And, you know, we, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to start off with an argument here, and that is, well, what if I, here's, here's uh, point P, we want to find the distance from point P. So actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to choose point P as my access point. I mean, it's, it's already labeled there for us. It's tempting to just make that my access point. And uh, I'm going to make the argument. Let's, take, let's, let's imagine taking our force three arrow and applying it just somewhere over here. Somewhere on this side. And we want to have the total torque be zero. Uh, and so let's, let's think about the torques created by these three forces as they're drawn now. Now, so I'm going to hold point P fixed. And if I pull on the 17.3, uh, Newton, that force, that's not going to cause the object to rotate at all. It doesn't create any torque about point P here. Similarly, if I held the axis point fixed and pulled down on the 10 Newton uh, force, I would see the object rotate counterclockwise. And if my force three arrow was over here and I held that point fixed and pulled, that would also tend to make it rotate counterclockwise. And so we can make the argument that force three can't be over on the right side of point P. Anywhere I put it over here, both of these forks are causing there to be, uh, both of these forces are causing there to be torques that are uh, trying to rotate the object counterclockwise. So let's take a look uh, if I put force three over here somewhere. And again, I'm just going to put it at some arbitrary position because we're, well, we're trying to find out how far away it is. Uh, and so what we need to do in that case is we should label this distance. And so, you know, we're trying to find out how far away that force is. Uh, let's just label it uh, uh, distance d here. And, and actually, just to check what we checked before, if I, you know, pulling on the 10 Newton force would cause this to rotate counterclockwise. And now I can see that if I held the axis fixed, and pulled on force three, that would tend to cause it to uh, rotate uh, clockwise. And so it, it does seem possible that those torques uh, could add up to zero. And so, uh, well, we need to sum up these torques. We already argued that this force creates zero torque. And so to, to calculate our torques here, we're going to take our, um, so again, we're just going to be using the torque the magnitude of the torque is the lever arm distance times the force. Um, and so we're going to take our 10 Newton force and multiply it by its lever arm. And then I'm going to take my 20 Newton force and multiply it by its lever arm. All right, so uh, yeah, let's, let's think about this here. So the 10, the, the 10 Newton force is going to be uh, relatively easy for us. So I'm going to draw in my uh, line there, my dotted line, and we want to find the lever arm distance, the shortest distance between this line and the axis point. And that is one-fourth of that um, object's full length there. So that's going to be one meter. Uh, and if you'd like to, normally we consider that a uh, counterclockwise torque uh, is positive and a torque that tends to rotate the object counterclockwise uh, is, is negative. And so, um, yeah, now we're going to look at, uh, find the lever arm distance for force three as it's drawn based on our uh, distance D there. And so I'm going to draw in my line of action through here. And again, we want to find that shortest distance between that dotted line and the axis point. And it's going to be around here. And we will get this right angle. And so we do, again, have this nice right triangle. We want to find this length. This length is D. And oh, there was something we, uh, well, in order to get this angle right here, I need to get this angle. 
but it, it's not too bad for us. If we go back over here, um, now that we know that this is 10 and this is 20, we could do uh, a sine inverse to, f to find out that this angle is 30 degrees. And we know from our geometry that if this is 30 degrees up here, um, then this is also going to be 30 degrees here. And so our lever arm distance is going to be d times the sine of 30 degrees. <clears throat> and so I can now, I can plug that in right here. Let me give myself some more space. Um, oh, and the sine of 30 is, uh, well, one half. And so what I've got here is I've got plus 10 minus, so I've, the sine of 30 is 1 half minus d times 10 equals 0. And so we can do the algebra here that d equals 1 meter. Answer C. All right.